Hello again, folks. Yes, it's 232 Private Elgar, Royal Army Medical Corps, with part two of his saga in the British Army. Do you know the words to that? About Hitler and Goebbels, and if I play that on the piano, you'll have to look at my video doing that. But anyway, this is Germany. Deutschland, Deutschland, über alles, über alles in der Welt. I learned a bit of German when I was there. The first place I got sent to was British Military Hospital in Munster. I wasn't there a long time, but I went into the old town, and in the old town there was camera shops. Wonderful! This is the old town of Munster with the with the Dom there, the cathedral, and in those arcades was all camera shops with rolly flexes and likers. Well the camera starved poor bloody British over here, we weren't allowed to import cameras. It was wonderful. After Munster I got sent to a British um, military hospital in Spandau in Berlin on the border with the Russian zone and down the road the Russians were there and every Wednesday they shoot off their guns just to let us know they were still there. But um, in, in there we got the famous sectors, British, American, French sectors of Berlin. And here is the Brandenburg Gate taken with my ensign selfies but done on a very poor enlarger. It shows you the red flag of the Russians on the Brandenburg Gate and a guy up there stopping everybody going in. Achtung! See, wir lassen nach 17 meters West Berlin. You are now leaving the British sector 17 meters. And then um, there's me at the gatehouse with a regimental it was German policeman there. I didn't, I wasn't a policeman, I was in the path lab. And then below, we've got the scene of the British Military Hospital in Berlin. And um, that used to be a Gestapo headquarters. And on the wall of the uh, maternity block, you could pick out bits of um, lead from where they used to shoot people. Anyway, there's a load of babies born there then. Now here's, here's my kit, kit layout, still have to do kit layouts, me reading a book and down below here's a, here is a view from what is known the Haunted Gallery. That is a view from the Haunted Gallery in another block of the maternity ward. Now here's a story, you used to go up there and there was no lights and there were a load of coffins up there left over from the concentration camps and that. But one day I was on duty at night orderly, night orderly sergeant, you got promoted to sergeant for the night, so you could tell people off, you know, I was only a private at the time. They said, go up to the haunted gallery and find Sergeant Steele's nose. I thought, what has ever happened? Sergeant Steele had got a bit drunk and he got up to the haunted gallery and he smashed the window and so sh shouting down to his mates down below, and he put his head through the smash window, and then he pulled his head back, and he cut the tip of his nose off. <laughs> oh my godfathers. So he gave me a huge torch, there were no lights, and I had to go up the haunted gallery <laughs> holding this big torch. I found the broken window, and there on the windowsill was a bit of flesh. So they gave me a great big wad, um, load of cotton wool, and I pick it up and run down with my big torch to the a and &E department and the surgeons got Sergeant Steele stuck his nose back on and then after that I had to escort Sergeant Steele back through the uh, Russian zone on a train through Hanover and, and I was posted to British Military Hospital in Iserlohn I remember but to, that was a story there but about Berlin. They introduced me to Schulteis beer in the Naffy. I didn't like beer. I, I thought I hadn't drunk beer. I went straight from school. There's, there's, a, there's a load of us squaddies. 
where am I? I'm, I'm here holding some beer that I didn't like. I said, try it, Schulteis. Schulteis. And here is the Kaiser Wilhelm Gedeckniskirche, Kirche, the, the, uh, bombed by the Allies, and that is now left as a re reminder of the war damage in Berlin. And the people in East Berlin were living in holes in the ground, but there was one road called Stalin Alley. Now, for some reason, Stalin Alley's been renamed. <laughs> anyway, that was built up. You had to go on an organised coach. And you weren't allowed to photograph out the windows because you had a minder there until we went to the Russian War Memorial Gardens. There's a load of anything the Russians could do to get into the West, they would. They were taking part in guarding Rudolf Hess at Spandau Prison. Now, I used to do blood tests on Rudolf Hess there in Spandau Prison. His blood would come along. He was Group O rhesus positive and his urine was good. And the other test they wanted was, in, was it sexually transmitted diseases, which was always negative. That poor old boy died in the prison, about 80 odd. But how are they going to get sexually transmitted diseases in Berlin? I don't know. But then I was say that I was sent to British Military Hospital is alone in the safety of the British occupied zone. But to see that eagle, on the claws of the eagle you could see a Nazi Hagenkreutz swastika has been hacked and hacked off. And um that's still there, because I went back in 1987 and the hospital was closed for refurbishment and they said no photographs. So I thought, blame me, all that way. Um, I weren't allowed to photograph, but that's been handed back to the Germans now. But we, we was in a laboratory there and then I finally got promoted. I got promoted first to Lance Corporal. And there we are. There's me down there with my Lance Corporal armband. And the old lady is Fraulein Domak. She was the sister of Professor Domak who invented the uh, sulfonamides. Well, here we are, some scenes of British military hospital with our German above the path lab with his gas mask and snow scenes. Taking on my ensign cell fix. We had the Canadians with us as well. And there was, there's a... Um, there's a picture of me there when I got to be a full corporal. I had to be on a, had to go on a corporal's course. So there's some fresh-faced, fresh-faced 18-year-old to a battle-hardened 21-year-old full corporal. Now, I was battle-hardened because of the things I saw in the army, but you know these films, there's a war going on and somebody had his legs shot off and he's lying on the ground, he calls, medic, medic, and the brave medic with his steel helmet and his cross on it and his satchel crawls up under fire to, to deal with the poor guy with his blood spurting it. Well, I didn't do that. I was in the safety of the military hospitals doing tests on pregnant ladies and stuff. Good Lord, we used to do them every Wednesday, blood tests. But then... <coughs> We had the naffy there, we had German girls in the naffy. I never had a girlfriend. Uh, I was the original virgin soldier. There's a picture of us on parade there. Corporal Clues at the front. It was always on my back, that bugger. Even when I got promoted to full corporal, he'd still be on my back. They, um, sometimes it was good, sometimes it was bad. I didn't enjoy it all, I'm afraid. It was Hot Lips Logan there. She was Scottish. She was uh, Royal Army. She was in the Quarranks here, the Queen of Exiles Royal Army Nursing Corps. I had a chance with her, but I never took it. But Johnny Brayshaw did from the Canadian Army. Good God. There's a, I was asked to, it was in the Naffy one day, and a sergeant came in. Anybody here do driving? So, yes, sergeant. He said, right, he says, I want you to drive this vehicle down to the carpool, follow me in my one. And I got outside, there was a little original army green Volkswagen. I'd never been in a Volkswagen. 
I'd only been in the Ford Popular. My Uncle Jim was helped me to have driving lessons back in England in a Ford Popular with three gears. You know, I got in this Volkswagen <laughs> and I managed to get into first gear, but I couldn't get it out first gear. And I had to trundle down to the pool with the um, Volkswagen in first gear. Oh, do you remember that? My first and only bit of driving in the British Army. But we had a camera club there. Um, I sorted out all the camera clubs I could. There's, there's a picture of us down below at the Army Camera Club run by this captain there. And um, we was dropping light bulbs onto a stone using electronic flash and catching the breaking glass. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh, I've got some pictures of that. Then we have Christmas. I spent one Christmas there. And, and this is all the events with the nurses, army nurse, we had the Canadian nurses and the British nurse. There's one here, break my heart, where is she? That one. Oh, she was lovely. But she was an officer and I'd have to salute her. But then I had a waltz with her and a quick step. And I thought, oh my gosh, she's lovely and I really fancied her. But broke my heart as usual. She went off with a captain from the Royal Army Dental Corps. So another broken romance that was. I don't know. But anyway, I've survived, folks. Battle-hardened old bugger. And here's me proudly marching on the Remembrance Parade with me poppy every November. We remember all those poor buggers who was killed in the wars. And my wife is Filipino. She said all this happened so long ago, well before I was born, 19 forgotten, she'd say. I say, yeah, but remember, if it wasn't for those poor Yanks who was killed liberating the Philippines, you'd all be speaking Japanese. You've got to remember that. One of those poor Yanks, thousands of them killed. You've got to remember. Never forget. Anyway, folks, I get a bit upset. Thank you for watching. See you next time.